Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Darksafe Walker and before we do anything, let's quick do the RNG so I know what soundtrack to put up. Piano solos it is. Alright. So we'll go ahead and close that out. So today we're continuing on with the Basic Arcana Spotlight series. And today we're going to be looking at, probably to no one's surprise, Chaos Reaper. Now, if you know my stance on how I review these, you're probably going, wait, you think Chaos Crush is better than Chaos Reaper? Yes. Yes, I do. I'm not even going to hide that. Don't get me wrong, Chaos Reaper is cool, and it's got a lot of upsides. But, in the long run, I just think Chaos Crusher is just... is just, just It does what it does a little... a lot a bit better. It's easier to use, so whatever. So let's just go ahead and get into it. One thing I didn't have... Oh, that was probably... Oh, I see what's going on. All right, so as you can see, it's got a nice wide range. Like, you can practically hit enemies standing off to one side of you with it. Now, obviously, the second one is... The second swing has a wider range. But it doesn't, but regardless, you can get a lot of damage done with this bad boy. Now that having been said, it's it doesn't do any more damage than sorry than Phantom Division. At least. At least not with the uncharged one. That's right, this is a charge. This is a charge basic. But even still, with the idea that you have one hit for 10 and one hit for 20, that can be char that can be added on to with with a decent damage up. Like even with just like a 10% damage up, you'll be hitting 11 and 22, so it's already a good deal better. I also like how fast Chaos Reaper is. Like, as you can see, there's not a, not a big frame delay between swings. So we've got a nice... I mean, it's still melee range, but it's a... But it's kind of like a mid-melee range, so to speak. Like, it's got similar range to, like, Flame Cross or Bolt Rain. But now, let's go ahead and get into the charge attack. So, as, as I showed you just earlier, and as I've been continuing to show you, Chaos Reaper just is just a quick 1-2, like there's nothing else beyond that. But if you do a charge, instead of just getting 1-2, you get 1, and then 1-2-3. Now that 1-2-3 does 10-10-15, but then it also hits... But then the last hit of it also hits with a with a gravity ball. So not only are you hitting for 45, but then you're hitting for an additional... Actually, 35. I'm sorry, I did my math wrong. So not only is that last hit hitting for 35, but then you get the additional three fives, which tick up for... for another 15. So... 10, 10, 15... So 10, 20, 35, 40, 45, 50. Now why it's saying... Oh, wait. So it's 4, 5. So it's... It should be 50... It should be 55. Why it's saying 60, I'll never be sure. Is it actually hitting for 5, 5 times? Well, whatever the case, that means that the full damage on Chaos Reaper... Is a whopping is a whopping seventy damage. That's ridiculous. That's that is incredible damage, and that's those are numbers that even a lot of standards wish they could. Plus, you know, plus between your wide range and so between speed, wide range, and crazy damage. The Chaos Reaper actually does have a lot going for it. Now, it doesn't combo super well, 
but with but it's got decent knockback for a basic, which means that you can actually get a lot of work done with, with this bad boy because the gravity well effect will also continue to control enemies and add stun onto bosses. So there's a good possibility that my opinion that Chaos Crusher is better is probably not entirely accurate because I had forgotten that this one got really, really well boosted and during the Phantom update. So I may revise my opinion after I get all of them done. Um, I'm not going to say anything that I haven't already said about the candy, so let's just move on to Sidewinder's badge. So, with the basic swing, it goes from 10 to 13. The second swing goes to 25. So, that's 38 damage. Now, there's a lot of numbers happening there, so let's see if I can break this down. I think it's 10, 10, 3, 10, 3, 15, 5. And that's assuming that I'm reading it right because because it's all happening so quickly. But assuming that what I'm seeing is right, so that's 13, 26, 41, 46, 46. Like, it's saying that it's hitting for 76. I'm not entirely seeing where all that damage is, but... Like, I can... I'm just flat out telling you that I'm not sh Something is wrong with my math, but... But again, with using Sidewinder's badge and just that one hit, you're getting 10 extra damage. So with everything put together, you put Sidewinder's badge on this bad boy, and you are hitting for 85. That's oh, that's almost as much, if not just as much, as Crashing Meteor. That is a ridiculous amount of damage, and yeah, that's that can define that can define entire builds. Now, I would obviously say, if you have this, go with Chrono Glove, but Combo Glove... ...can do that. And that has an awful lot going on. Also, I'd like to point out that if you're just doing the quick one-two, you can you can take a step forward while you're using it, which means you can like take the first swing and then suddenly go, "Oh crap, I messed up," and you can re-aim it another direction if you want to. So, despite what I said earlier, I'm just gonna go ahead and say I think I might be wrong. I think. Chaos Reaper is probably better than Chaos Crusher, and definitely has the makings to potentially be one of the one of the best basics in the game, but let's take it for a test drive and find out. Now, I'm not going to take Chrono Glove or, or Sidewinder's badge because I feel it would be just too easy. I also think that Awe and Dark Katana would be nearly broken. So, we're just gonna go with the rule robe, and then we're just gonna go nice and basic, we're just gonna go Amulet of Sundering, but even that means that that first hit is doing 12, and the second hits are also doing way more. Yeah, 67. That's still not bad for just a basic setup. But trust me when I say that, like, the Awe and Dark Katana would go really well with this, thanks to its high damage and rapid hits. And if you put Chrono Glove on, you know, that shortens the charge time for charge basics by about 75%, so... So look how much easier this is to achieve. So I would definitely recommend if you're gonna use... If you're gonna use Chaos Reaper, first of all, it's versatile enough that it doesn't really need the Chrono Glove, 
but definitely keep an eye open for that, because that is ridiculously good. Alright. So now let's set up the rest of our build. We'll go ahead and grab Flare Rush because I feel like it. Alright, what next? We have ourselves a power build, so let's grab some things that work well with, with a power setup. Exploding Fireball is of course one of the one of the key standards. Now, I don't talk about crashing meteor much, but one of the things it got when it when it got the upgrade in the Phantom update is that it now drops Comet beforehand and then smashes, so it's much easier to use. I think it overall does the same amount of damage, but I would I would argue that because it gets all those extra hits, you can actually make this work pretty well with a with a critical hit setup. Now, I'm not gonna lie. I don't think that's a that's a great charm. That's a great signature, but it's interesting. And one of these days, I will use it. Just don't think that day is gonna be today, because I want to go with something that lets me show off kind of what kind of what the old Chaos Reaper is all about. And because it's both because it's damage and control all at once, I kind of feel like I can stick with something like. I don't know, what's what sounds like just a good power move? I mean, Crystalline Balester is one of my personal favorites. Thunderdrop, maybe. Plus you've got you've got pretty easy combos there. So yeah, I'll probably go with that, but then what do I want to do here? I kind of feel like I should do something that's a combination of both power and control. Or maybe I'll just go Radiant Knockout, I like that one a lot. Actually, Seismic Entry sounds like a good one. No wait, that's too many jumps. I could I'm I'm not trying to be the murder bunny. I'm just I'm I'm just trying to be a bunny. I don't have to murder. There, a little bit of range control. How about that? Actually, it's just range damage because until it gets upgraded, it doesn't have a lot of control. But regardless, I think we've got a good setup here, and I'm not too worried about who we fight first, so we'll just go. I don't see the retro floor plan, so screw it. Looks like we got Zeal, Shu, and Freya. Come on, guys, how long does it take to meticulously reshape an entire castle? picked up to record, I'm not gonna lie guys, I had completely forgotten that, so I might take Wallet of Vigor, I'm not sure. It's gonna depend on how much money I think I'm gonna be spending on this floor. I had completely forgotten that Chaos Reaper had gotten those, those upgrades in the, in the Phantom update. So I was prepared to go into this going, it's good, but I still think that Chaos Reaper has it beat. I may very well be wrong about that. I know I've already said that once, but 
I, and I'm now I'm now seeing it in action, going, okay, so it hits once for already for I not great knockback, but enough enough knockback that you can generally get the second hit off. And it has that gravity well effect that you get from gravity onslaught. Like it's actually way better than I remembered. That doesn't one thing I can see it being I can see being a weakness for this one though. Is that it's probably not is that I don't think it's gonna be great against bosses. Now I see the glove of patience over there, and that may or may not be worth it depending on what the downsides are. So let's see what the Freddy Krueger glove does. Increases basic arcana damage and reduces the charge time for any basic arcana with a charge final. But it increases cooldowns for all other arcana. I'm gonna give it a try. Okay, so that is a lot of additional cooldown. That might be a mistake. But it will definitely be a it'll definitely be a testament to how good Chaos Reaper is if I can still beat the game even in this state. Can Chaos Reaper really just do it all? I guess we'll find out. Yeah, the damage is absolutely absurd. Make no mistake. I'm gonna grab that and see how things work out. And the reason why I'm gonna go back and do a couple more combat rooms is to make sure that I have enough money for the next floor. Because with the with my cooldown being as being as wonky as they are now. I would really like to. I would really like to, at the very least, make sure I have more combat options. But make no mistake, I. Even if just by accident, very heavily weighted the entire run on my basic. Which will now prove, hopefully, what I've been saying is that even though the even though other arcana are by all rights technically stronger because they're you know, they have cooldowns and they're so you can't spam them like you can with the basic. So your basic has to be really good in order to justify that. Um, I would do this if I were take if I were using a more ranged build, a big, a right build. How you, I would do with that. How you doing? But I'm not doing a ranged build, and I accidentally slipped into a terrible accent. Pretty sure my own accent is already terrible for people to listen to. It's like, oh god, he's so Minnesota. <laughs> God, look at that, just the 1-2 is hitting for 51. Yeah, 51. I don't need to tell you guys that there are standards that wish that they could hit that consistently. Cyclone Boomerang, okay. Yeah. 
There we go. nice combo going on here. Because of Chaos Reaper's knockback, I'm pushing enemies directly into... Oh! Reduces my cooldowns, and increases my signature charge rate. Admittedly, it's not doing much because it's plus 50% to the cooldowns, but... I would rather have 46 instead of 50 as the penalty. And if we happen to find more Cursed Arcana, then we've got, we've definitely got, we've definitely got something really powerful going for us. I mean, that's not going to happen on this floor, of course, but I'm just saying. Um, yeah, I don't know if any of this is really any good. I would, what I would like is more fire or electric based arcana. I would take that with a grain of salt, I guess. And yeah, I know that there was an electric one there, but you know, not a good electric one. Hey, that's the second time I've essentially done that sitting completely still. I'll take that. So, does... So, does Thunderdrop now have a claw... Oh, I was going to go back and get the stinky mushroom. Oops. I was going to I was gonna grab it just in case a Hunter's Satchel moment came up, but... I don't know, I'll feel stupid about that if I see the Hunter's Stiletto. But yeah, does Thunderdrop now have a clause that basically states that it's... Now, that it basically sits still if you're up against a boss? Like, obviously this won't count because... Because I'm up against a wall. Nope. No, it doesn't. I was just... I was reading the room wrong. See, the little gravity well hits actually count towards stun, so... <clears throat> this is now better against bosses than it used to be as well. Like, everything that they gave to Chaos Reaper in the Phantom update was just straight upgrade. The developers obviously had quite a lot that they wanted to do with this particular Arcana. Not that I blame them at all. Like, it makes me wonder, were they trying to design this to be the best chaos? Well, not just best chaos, uh, not best chaos basic, but the best basic in general. Because, yeah, this one, this one basic just does it all. And I'm aware that it's looking even better than it was because I have the Glove of Patience. I'm just 
want you all to understand, I'm definitely revising my opinion on this one. This one is definitely better than I remember it being. Boss chamber. Like before, the best thing that Chaos Reef. Oh, he can also hit a little bit behind you, too. Like, not a huge amount, but definitely enough to. enough to justify it being able to just keep you covered. Like, in com especially in comparison to Phantom Division. This Arcana is just ridiculous. Like, this Arcana just does everything. Ow. How dare you. It even has, like, the range of... Yeah, we'll grab that. And what the hell, we'll grab that too. But yeah, it even has the range of things like Bolt Rail, maybe just a tiny bit more than that even. Like, it's kind of, Like, I'm having a hard time justifying... All, like, if you're looking for, like, a top-tier run, like, it really depends on what you're looking for. Like, Bolt Rail can get on... It can get things off that have more... That need more triggers like Quantum Edge or Magnetic Follow-Up, but if you're not using one of those, like, it's almost hard to justify using any basic except this one. Unless you're going for something specific. Like, that's just how good this has become. Now, I might be singing a different tune if I had the Glove of Patience. If I didn't have the Glove of Patience, mind you. Because the charge is now coming up 40% faster and with additional damage. But, I mean, think about what you're seeing. Like, even without the additional, ch even without the additional charge speed, you've still got something that covers as much, as much of a wide sweep as it does. Like, it's still really good. Um, I do love me some Thundering Chain. But is that what I want to take? Because I also saw Twin Turbines. Twin Turbines is good for control and damage. But, Thundering Chain is fast. You know, I take Twin Turbines all the time. I'm gonna go ahead and take Thundering Chain. Wait. Alright, and Red Portal is by the boss room. Forgive me, Iris. And you rebuild all your stuff using magic anyway, so I don't think you're gonna mind me kicking your stuff. Ooh. Good doctor might just give us something fantastic. Let's see what what I can afford to give her. Fractal flare. I can afford to give her fractal flare. Hmm. There we go. Oh, looking good. Now that Pathfinder's knapsack is looking like an even better purchase. Oh, wow. Alright, so this is just plain a good run. Like, this is ridiculous. Of course, I also did get pretty beat up in that one room. Like, some some rooms are just hard to get through without taking damage. They're typically the rooms that don't give you a lot of room to maneuver around and expect a lot out of you. A 
and you all know what types of runes I'm talking about. Like, I don't really have a use for this, but I'm gonna pick it up just in case I can find something to do with it. Who knows, maybe <laughs> maybe the face will smile, smile upon me even more, and let me have something like the... Let me have something like the Adorable Mimic. But I guarantee what's gonna happen is that all of my luck gets used up on this run, and... Yay, I'm smart! Yay, I'm smarter. Alright, well that was a horrible tragedy of a room. And yet somehow that room went without a hitch. You know, if there's one thing that's consistent about my play, it's that it's consistently inconsistent. Thank you, Nitroglycerin Barrel. That was perfect. Have I mentioned that I hate those Nitroglycerin Barrels? I just want to make sure that my feelings are out there in case I haven't said anything. Alright, everything else is to the north. Hello. I think I've also stated before that I really like Erupting Cannonade. That having been said, it might be better for me to grab a healing potion. But maybe not. Oops, I misplaced in my mind where that where that vendor was. Actually, I think defense is the better call here, and what do I think would be better for defense? Look me your shield. Surprise projectiles are, are a bigger problem for me personally. have a need to pick that up. I'm just gonna leave that be so I don't throw myself off with how much health I have. There, that looks better. Wait, why did it not move? Okay, something is up with Thunder Drop. Why does it randomly decide just to go nowhere? Seekers, get out of here.
All right, so in so far, I've been proving to myself that Chaos Reaper is, for one, not only way better than I remember it being, but it, it just kind of does everything well. It does damage, it does control, it does... Does damage, it does control, it can it can be fast, not always. It requires an item to be fast, kinda like other Ar other arcanas do sometimes need tools in order to be really good. But this one, even before tools, has a lot going on. anything I want. I think what you have that I can make use of because of the Curse Eater's Watch is the Alchemist Stone. So I'll grab that. Also seeing the increased signature charge coming to good use as well. So I've always been a big fan of the water cushion, and you guys have seen it save my ass on multiple occasions, so I would definitely say at if you find the water cushion, definitely one of the better defensive relics out there. Like it's like it and the mirror shield will save your hide. But I also do tend to think that even that even something as good as the mirror shield and. Water cushion. I wanted to call it something else, because it is something else. It's an ice shield. It's not a it's not a cushion of water. Okay, something is up. Oh my god! That actually makes this a really good combo tool. Guys, if you use Thunder Drop. Okay, so here's I just figured something out about Thunder Drop. So I know that this is supposed to be all about Chaos Reaper, but fuck that for a minute. Look, check this out. So normally when we're using Thunder Drop, we're used to it looking like that, where it's like teleport forward a ways, drop down, punch your enemy in the face with a thunderbolt. You know, learn directly from Mewtwo from Pokémon Tournament. But here's what I just figured out. If you so one more time, baboo, teleport. But if you use Thunder Drop without a directional input, so completely neutral on the D-pad, you do it in place. That is so great for combos. Oh my god, I'm so I'm so happy I know that. Now I don't know if that holds true for the signature, but just knowing that for the normal version of Thunder Drop is incredible. Like, does that also work when it's when it's the when it's the non non enhanced version when it's the normal version? Oh my god! So I just discovered tech. Oh, hey, I can 
figure it out right now. Yes, it also works for the signature version. So if you uh, if you don't want to move when using Thunder Drop, just don't hold anything on the D-pad. Oh my goodness, that is so cool. Like I am so I am super glad that I know that. Turns out I didn't need that at all. Okay, that means that for the bunny for bunny ears builds, that that technique is an absolute must. Like you have to take that on on jump arcana builds. Like you, there's just no negotiation. Also, if it wasn't so late in the run, I would definitely take the pewter bracelet. That having been said, I'm gonna be making a bunch of money. So, I don't mind using Mercenary Stagger. Wait. I didn't actually need to move there, but I mean, it's new art, it's new tech. I mean. I'm gonna have to get used to it, but yeah. That's why on my Chaos Reaper video, I discovered some tech about Thunder Drop. Sweet, that has nothing to do with anything. up and use it if you don't if you don't use the thunder drop tech then I'm going to disown you as human beings. No I obviously I won't do that. I'll just be a little bit sad that you didn't use the tech. So how many of you already knew that about Thunder Drop? Because I did not know that, so discovering it just for myself without any prompting, I feel really proud of myself for that, and I hope you guys find that, find that to be as cool of an addition as I did. Alright, so this episode is about two things. One, how great Chaos Reaper is, and two, Thunder Drop tech. so good knowing that. Alright, I'm gonna lay off of that for a little while because I think you guys are probably thinking that I'm just, you know, piling it, at a, piling it on just for the sake of dramatization, but no, I'm actually incredibly surprised by the idea that I discovered some Wizard of Legend tech. Like, I don't know if it'll ever be useful for, like, a speedrun per se, but do I think that someone will immediately get some use of do I think that someone could get some loose out of that to build a new run for it? Definitely. Oh, I should have used it while sitting still. See, that's something I have to actually keep in mind now, is oh, I can use that while sitting still. 
That time I should have. But this is also me just putting it into my head that yes, I can use this while sitting still. So I can just combo the signature into a into a Chaos Reaper rush. Oh, it's so good. Wow, that it can still hit, that move can still hit you in midair. Either that or I was coming down onto its hitbox. Okay, I think what happened is I was coming down onto his hitbox and the same thing just happens over there. So if you're using it to, if you're using it to be evasive, just be careful. Don't be afraid to don't be afraid to not use the new tech. Avoid in, to avoid incoming damage, because that's part of what what makes Thunder Drop so good is its versatility. Dark Sage learned a new trick. Okay, I'm not going to worry about that. I am, however, going to purchase you. And then the question becomes, do I spend any more money? And I think just because of how many Electric Arcana I have, the answer is yes. I spend just a little bit more money, pick that up, and now we move forward. And I used the new Thunder Drop tech to be here to bait Sura. Oh my goodness. I've learned something. And hopefully you guys have too, between my analysis of Chaos Reaper and the new Thunder Drop tech. I, I really hope that this episode is something that you guys can really latch onto and be like, look, the community for Wizard of Legend is still growing. I mean, come on, if they can find new glitches for a game like A Link, into, a Link to the Past, like like 31 years after its release, surely we can be okay with discovering just a little bit of new tech in Wizard of Legend three years after its release. So take that for what it's worth, but yeah, 
on the point of Chaos Reaper, because that's what this episode was supposed to be about. Wonderful, wonderful basic. It's it's had so many things that at first seemed like they were just quality of life improvements, but oh, they can do so much more. And yeah, grabbing the love of patience was definitely not a bad choice. Yeah, the 50% cooldown on all of your other arcana are a problem, but what does it matter when Chaos Reaper is so all-encompassingly good? Like, like seriously, if you remember what Chaos Reaper was like before the Phantom update, take it again and try it again now, because it's so, so good. Like, you won't be disappointed, I promise you that. So, thank you guys very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and learn something about both Chaos Reaper and Thunderdrop. And yeah, that's about all I've got. Like, comment, subscribe, YouTube. Definitely share this video because there's some really useful new tech in this video. And I will catch you guys in the next one. My name is Dark Sage Walker, and there's only one Chaos Basic left, baby. I'll see you next time.